luxury or if it's sales or something like that, you, you talk it that way. And then um, you can also touch on products and services. Yeah. And then you can also talk about the company size, if it's a multinational um, company or if it's just local here in Bulayan or if it's a national, something like that. I will repeat the audio. A manufacturing company. So, who do you work for? I work for a large multinational company called DAC Group. We have five main areas of business, construction, heavy industry, shipbuilding, motor vehicles and telecommunications. And which side of the business do you work in? The motor vehicles division. I work in our Belgian factory. We manufacture components for our car production plants in Europe. Where are DAC headquarters? In Seoul. But the company has operations in over 50 countries and 30 factories all over the world. Products and markets. What does your company do exactly? We design and assemble a wide range of electric generators for hospitals, hotels and small factories. We specialize in medium-sized generators, but we're hoping to diversify into larger models next year. And who do you sell to? We export to Eastern Europe and the Far East. The domestic market accounts for about 40% of our total sales. Company size. How many people does your company employ? We have over 60 employees. We have about 40 factory workers and technical people, and the rest are admin and sales staff. We started off with only 10 people, so our workforce has grown a lot. What's your annual turnover? It was just over 2 million euros last year. Company background. How long has the company been in business? For over 40 years. The original company, Davis Engineering, was founded in 1960 by the Davis brothers in a small workshop near Manchester. They closed down the workshop in 1980 and opened up a new factory in Leeds. When did it become IABS? In 1997, when it was bought by a German company. They set up two more businesses in the UK. What does IABS stand for? International Air Braking Systems. Next up is we will listen to a recording, um, some sample dialogues that involve talking about your role in the company or what you do for the company. What does your job involve? I'm in charge of 25 assembly workers. I have to liaise with our inspectors. Who do you report to? I'm on flexi time. Do you do overtime? We have a three shift system. I'm on the early shift. What does your job involve? I'm in charge of 25 assembly workers. I have to liaise with our inspectors. Who do you report to? I'm on flexi-time. 
Do you do overtime? We have a three shift system. I'm on the early shift. So let's do some recap, especially for those who just came in. Next time, if I say the class starts at 5, you come here before 5. That's what I mean by on time. Okay, let's start with um, the company that you work for. So it was mentioned earlier by one of your classmates that um, it involves talking about uh, the history of the company, right? What else? What else did you get from the first recording? Anyone? Company background, ma'am. Yes, company background. Mm -hmm. So you can start with when it was founded, if you know that. Not everyone, of course, knows that, but it would mean that you are very um, committed. You know the history background. You have done your research. So if you can talk about how or when the company started, that would be great. And then you can also talk about um, the number of employees in the company. So not really the exact, but you can say we're over 200 or we're over 100 um, in the workforce or something like that. Or um, just in the manufacturing, we're about 1,000 employees, something like that. And then you can also talk about what your job involves. So you can say that um, you're involved in overlooking um, other technicians if you're a manager or something that or um, you work with inspectors or you can also talk about who you report to so you can say I actually report direct to the owner or direct to um, the manager or something like that or if you're still a trainee um, you can say I I'm still a trainee and this and that but my focus would be more in production or if you are in um, I don't know manufacturing it, that would depend on um, your focus, correct? So you can also talk about, in, in just the first recording, uh, the recording also talked about um, the, the flexi time or if you are in a fixed schedule, right? So if you work nine to five or eight to four or eight to six or six to six here in, um, here in Cagayan, I heard, Especially if you're in PSC, there are six to six, so six in the morning until six in the evening, and then six in the evening, six in the morning. So you can also say it like that. Like, um, I actually work six to six, or I, I work flexi time. That would mean that your schedule is flexible. You can just go in um, whenever you know you are required to go in, you know, like that. Or you can talk about how many shifts you have in the company. So. You can say six to six, so that's two shifts or three shifts in a day or in a 24 hour um, rotation or something like that. So that's for the really, um, first recording. The second recording, like what I have mentioned earlier, um, the dialogue actually talks about um, if you are in a manufacturing company. So that was just an example. So you can um, say that the company that you work for. It's actually a multinational company or an Asia-based company or a Kagani Oro founded company or um, a national company or a Manila-based or Cebu-based company. So you can begin with that. And then um, it will also be helpful if you, you talk about which side of the business you, you work for. So either you work in the manufacturing or in the maintenance or or else production. Um, so you can focus on, you know, what you specialize in your role. And then you can also talk about uh, where the company's headquarters or the main branch or I don't know, because sometimes I think that um, even if you're hard in Gavian, the, the, you know, the company is actually based in Cebu or in Manila or in Japan. So you can also talk about that. And then you can also talk about the products and services that you produce or that you deal with. So you can say that um, our, our company is actually producing or more on steel or more on, I don't know, um, 
if in the Monte, so the Monte products, there, you can talk about that. And then you can talk about the company size. If it's just here in um, the now or here in Cagandi Oro, something like that. So you can say it's a small, it's actually a small um, business where it's just about 50 employees in total. Or if it's a multinational company, you say it's actually a very big company that I work for. Um, it's, it's a multinational company. We're about a thousand employees in total, not just here in Mindanao, but we're also in, uh, we're also, uh, we also have branches in Cebu or Manila, so say like that. And then there, the company background, so the history, when it was founded, um, what maybe if a company has changed the name so many times, you can talk about that, you can say, uh, the example would be previously known as Theia, now it's something like that. So you, you can also mention um, what the previous name of the company was. And then the third uh, dialogue that you listen to, it was more on um, if, uh, if you are still in training, so you can say that I'm an apprentice with this and that like that and then what your job responses responsibilities are so if you are um, overseeing say if you are a manager so you can say i'm overseeing actually a lot of technicians or i work with engineers or i actually um i don't know it depends on your job role so you can focus on your job responsibilities and then if you are in charge of course you will be in charge of something right even if you are not a manager or in the future you will be in charge of something so you could say that I'm actually in charge with uh, machinery, especially in the ship during, I don't know, 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. So if there are any faults, by the way, we will also listen to faults later, um, minor problems, something like that. So anyway, so you can say that I actually oversee, I, I manage machines. Uh, if there are any faults or problems with machines from the ship, 6 p.m. to 6 a.m., I I actually um, take a look at them, and some, if it's something that I, I can't do myself, then I would something like that. So you 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 talk about what you are in charge of. Maybe not with people, but if you manage people, you can also include that. But most likely, you will be talking about um, uh, what you oversee in the company itself, like the machines, or if not the machines, what else do you oversee here? And then, um, like what I mentioned earlier about your shifts, your hours, or maybe holidays, or maybe you can even talk a little about overtime. So that's how actually what we do, um, especially if I am asked, um, say, where do you work? Or what do you do in school? So there, I, I, I touch a little on overtime, on our, you know, th those are just options, but most likely, um, the the main thing that you should include is, um, of course, the, the background of the company and what you do for the company, what you oversee, what you're in charge of, your job rules. So if you notice, none of um, the recordings talk about salary, right? So especially, yes, again, what we're learning here is how we talk about your job and the company that you work for, especially in scenarios where you will be talking to um, a possible client or, um, I don't know, someone who works in, in the company as well, but is in different departments, something like that. So um, we're not talking about friends and relatives here. Because most likely if they ask about your job, it would be, first asking about the salary, right? So we're not talking about that here. So there, so apart from hours and holidays, you can also talk about shifts there. So let's um, see, I, I, I have notes here, so we can see, uh, we can um, remember the dialogues that we listen to, so here. I have, do you remember hearing this? I work for a large multinational company. So you can begin with that. So if someone will ask you, um, who do you work for or where do you work? 
So an option is to describe the company first and then say the company name. So because you have to remember not it's uh it 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 it's not very common, but sometimes the person, especially if the person that's asking is, um, say, not a Filipino or not from Cagayan. So if you say just Del Monte, where, where do you work or who do you work for? And then you would just say, ah, Del Monte. So I'm sorry. So, you know, they would not, um, they would not get that right away because Del Monte is something that is, just for example, the Monte is something that's not, um, you know, very common in their area or they're not familiar about the Monte. So it's a good practice to describe the company first and then say the company. So you can begin with, I work for a large multi -com uh, multinational company. Or if it's not um, a multinational, if it's just um, you know, small or medium, you can say it's a medium-sized firm or it's a small family-owned business. There. And then you can also um, talk about, like what I said earlier, products and services. So you can say, we manufacture components or we manufacture parts or we produce components, something like that. So don't the use of the present simple tense for situations which are generally true. So you say simple present, that would mean that you say we manufacture and you do not say we are manufacturing. Because then we are manufacturing is, a, is actually an ING form of the verb, which would be then mean that it's something that you are doing at the moment you are speaking, right? So you are say you would say, I am eating. So that would mean that at the moment that you're speaking, you're actually eating. But here, especially if you talk about um, things that are generally true, so you just say, or you use the present simple tense of the verb. Do you get this? You say, we manufacture components, reproduce. You don't say, we are manufacturing, we are producing. No, you do not use the ing form of the verb. So you can say, in other examples, you can say, we produce parts for the shipbuilding industry, or we make boxes for packaging firms. So you notice um, the underlying words, these are in simple present tense, not the ING form of the firm. Questions so far? None? Uh, ma'am, how about ma'am, yes. mga power companies, ma'am? So how, how do we... Answered that. What, what do you what do you do? What does um power companies like Sepalco? Uh, Sepalco, stay uh, like more electricity yeah. with them. You can say that our company provide. Ah, okay, okay, like. okay, okay. So you don't say we are providing. Right? We are providing at the moment of speaking. Tapos patawo pa dili na mo provide. You get what I mean? Kung ing form of the word panggoy. In this slide lang ha, that we're talking about. So. Um, the slide, uh, what we're talking at the moment is that if you talk about um, the company, which are generally true, so true sha today, true sha tomorrow, true sha last week. So if it's a general truth, you use the simple present um, form of the verb. So you say, our company or Sipalco, um, it's actually a, I don't know, um, Mindanao based or Misamis Oriental based or Cagayan de Oro based um, um, electric, uh, electricity provider. And our company produce or provide um, electricity um, for, our, I don't know, 1,000 households in over a decade or something like that. So you, you give what um, the company is offering, but again, in the present simple um, tense of the verb. And then you talk about um, how many households, if that is relevant, and for how long. So you say um, for 1,000 families um, since 2000 or since 1987 or something like that. There. Any other questions? So Nagets na nato, um, we don't use the ING form of the verb. Yeah? No questions for that? Let's proceed. 
So again, you can talk about the size of the company. So you can say we have over 60 employees or we can, you can say uh, we have, uh, we are in a total of 20, kung gamay lang mo, we are a total of 20 or 30 um, employees. So other ways of talking about the number of employees, you can say we employ 2,000 people um, just for production or maybe just for um, management or administrative or something like that. You can also say there are 200 people working here. Very simple, very simple. There. So you can talk about, um, again, what the company specializes in. So you say, we specialize in medium-sized generators. So notice, again, the form, the tense of the verb. So you say, we specialize, very simple present tense. Dili shall we are specializing, dili pun shall we specialize. If you, if you use past tense, then that would mean na anak shut down na din yung company kayo. So note the use of specialized in. Specialized in would mean that your main products or the main services of the company. So going back to the question, how what if um, you're working for Stayag or with Palco? So you say we specialize in um, uh, electricity. Uh, I don't know uh, electricity and uh, maintenance and what, what do they do for Sopalco? Maintenance sa mga, um, so bali, mga poste or something like that. There. The point is, you can talk about um, the specialty of the company. So you specialize in, I don't know, if, if ever you will be working for um, uh, a company that produces car parts. So you mentioned that. And then specialty gives a um, company. So there. The key word is the specialized in. So there was also um, a line there in the dialogue. We have about 40 factory workers and technical people. So note the use of people here. So you can actually, when they say people, they can actually refer to maintenance people or production people or something like that. Well, I don't know, um, technical people or Depende kung sa company ang sa ila But um, yeah, it's very safe to say that you can, you know, we can, you can just say there are, um, there are 40 technical people in the company. Not really, you know, technicians or engineers or itong specific, but you can just say, you know, technical people. Uh, one word of advice, if you talk about the company that you work for or with your um, I don't know, your role in the company, it's also safe now you give something, but you don't give all, okay? Because that would, you know, that would not be safe. So um, you can talk about um, the company, but confidentiality issues. You don't really say, you know, there are only two um, technicians in the company and the other one is um, actually retiring so that's very you know that's that's beyond what you are you know what you're supposed to say so um you can just say um we're about five technical people but technical is very wide right really patient specific so say that's very unprofessional now. Okay, so again, the key word here is the use of the word people. So that would again imply it could be maintenance or production or other, you know, parts of the company. And then there was also... Um, in the conversation, there was something about the use of the word workforce. So you can also use this when talking about um, your job or the company that you work for. So you can say our workforce, workforce has grown a lot. So again, workforce could mean a group of people doing the job. So apart from using the word people from earlier, you can actually just say workforce. And very simple straightforward and I think everyone can get the thoughts, right? Okay, so if someone will say, what does your job involve? So 
this is how we ask about job choose. So it's not what we're also learning here is um, it's not just how you will answer to people, but you can also take notes on how you could ask, um, you know, people in your um, in the company. So if you are interested to know what the specific person is doing, so you can just say, what does your job involve? Very safe, very polite. Okay, so you can draw, uh, that would mean that you're actually asking about the job duties. If involved, um, if involved is followed in, sorry. If the word or if the verb, what does your, uh, what does your, that's, I'm sorry, that's a typo. What does your job involve? So if the word involved is followed by a verb, then use ing form of the verb. So you can say, my job involves checking the safety of our equipment. So the ING that I wrote there is actually the main verb that you are going to use when you answer that. So you can say, my job involves um, checking attendance or managing, producing, overlooking. So ING form of the verb. Questions on this? Not. Okay, so some other ways of talking about um, job responsibilities and duties or what your job involves, you can actually say, I take care of after sales service, or I look after the maintenance side of the business, or it's my job to check quality. So here, you can begin. What's important here, guys, is that, um, of course, because we don't really know yet where, where we are going to, to work, right? Um, I'm sure most of you will focus on their major, but there are other people that they would prefer very different from, you know, the course that they graduated in. So the key here in our lessons, remember the title of this, um, the title of this lesson um, is useful phrases. So you just take down notes, the phrases, example, and the sample sentences here, you take down notes how you um, how you begin your sentence. So just right there, I take care of, I look after. So that's actually a very useful, um, you know, phrases that you can use when you are already in the job and someone will ask about your job responsibilities or your job duties or your job description. So you can begin. Listen, but said no, nga um, na ano ta sa um, company you're already in the industry, and that one word person lang ta. So if someone will ask, what does your job involve? Ano other production or maintenance? Ano na lugar? So you know, you can begin again. Begin your sentences with that. Actually, I take care of um, the maintenance side of the business. So they are very useful. You can also say it's my job or it's my responsibility or it's my job. Okay, so I'm on flexi time. So flexi, I'm sure everyone knows this, is short for flexible hours. So you, that would mean that you don't work on fixed hours, like six to six there. Ready? Um, we are only 49 in this class. Of course, the rest of the people. Ready, Nada, for the quiz? I will, um, I will paste the link in the chat box. So the quiz is actually very, very simple, you guys. It's, just, it's very simple. Um, the purpose of the quiz is just to check if you did listen. And if you did listen, did you get anything from the listening activity? I don't know, it's just simple that you guys. 
This is the quiz. It's 5.45 in my time. By 6, I will close the link.